Well, we all know wind space by now with their carbon fiber bike products, their frames and their wheels, very well known. In fact, they're probably one of the most well-known Chinese brand of carbon fiber wheels and frame sets out there. Now, we know we're very familiar with their Hyper wheels. They're nice wheels. They've been around for quite some time, proved themselves, and they're on special at the moment, around about $1,200. They're normally around $1,500 for a pair. Nice wheels. Then there's their Mega wheels, which are around $2,500 if you can afford them. Nice wheels too. And then they have cheaper wheels though. There's the Route model, the Route series. They've got stainless steel spokes, a cheaper hub, and they're slightly heavier. However, they're $800 a pair, quite budget wheel set. Then there's their ordinary lawn road ones. That's their cheapest of them all uh, in their series. And they've got stainless spokes, cheaper hub as well. However, Windspace have now come out with a new wheel set. Why have they got a new wheel set? The UNAS, they call it UNAS, whatever that means, I'm not sure. And on top of the box, it's got Norway. Norway, does that mean it's made in Norway? I doubt it, it says on the packaging, made in China, Xiamen, China. So Norway, we'll find out in a bit in a minute. Anyhow, so why have they come out with this new wheel set? Let's find out. Our saver. Yeah. <laughs> Gone a bit limp there. <laughs> Bikes everywhere here. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. So what's with this new UNAS wheel set from Windspace? Well, have a look at the illustration on the box, give us a hint. Yep, they're really, really strong wheels. There they are lifting up a car, where it's supposed to be. So really, really strong wheels. Not only that, they're very, very light wheels. So how do they do that? Well, by using carbon fiber spokes. So these wheels have carbon fiber spokes, unlike the other wheels with stainless steel spokes. They also have upgraded the hubs. They've got ceramic bearings in them, so they'll be smoother hubs. They've also upgraded the clutch system. They use the DT Swiss clutch system, so easier to maintain if you need to. Or you can also change the number of engagements per revolution if you want to as well. Not only that, these wheels are 1,400 grams a pair, just under that. And the best part about it, believe it or not, these are only $850. That's the price of their cheaper wheel sets anyhow. So you're going to get a super duper good all-rounder wheel set for only $850. So that's why they came out with these wheels. Let's have a look. Still got the Norwegian flag, designed in Norway. Designed in Norway, made in China. It says UNAS in big letters there, UNAS Pro, and it's got the Norwegian flag, designed in Norway. It says UNAS on the hub. On first impressions, they seem to be quite nice. No spare spokes in the box. Does come with the tubeless valve. And of course the rim tape. So let's weigh them. Rear wheel, including the valve. Okay, 780 grams for the rear wheel. Front wheel, 620. So what's that all up? 1400 grams. Yeah. Nothing to write home about, considering they're not a deep profile. There are lighter wheels on the market. Nevertheless, 1400 grams is not too bad with the 14 mil depth. So measuring the inside width, 21.83. So I'd say 22 on the inside and on the outside, we've got 27.59. 
So I'm guessing there's supposed to be 22 inside and 28 on the outside. So in keeping with the modern trend of going wider tyres, these rims aren't quite really ideally suited. They're a little bit too narrow for going 32, 34. These rims are 40 millimetres deep, but you can also get them in a 50. The rims only come in clincher or hooked, so you can't get hookless. The dacles are thin stickers and you can feel them as there's no clear coat on the rims. A bit of rough going with tyre levers would probably leave their top edges a bit raggedy. There's that designed and not made in Norway dacle. Just look for the flag and you'll find the valve hole. Eunice Pro on the other side of the rim opposite the flag. So what else have we got? We've got carbon fibre spokes and they're 5 millimetres, 5.1 Aero, of course, bladed spokes. Nice sounding clutch. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And the spokes are straight pull from the hub. And it looks like tubeless ready. Well, I've got tubeless tape on there anyway. I'll just take this off. Stop! Read the instructions. Through axle, of course, 12 millimeter. Oops, <laughs> pulling the plastic protector off, I pulled the cap off. So at least the caps come off fairly easy. So it looks like it's one of those easy to service designs. Here we go, put the cap back on. Now the maximum weight capacity of these wheels, in keeping with what's on the box, holding up a car, well, they're supposed to be strong wheels, right? Well, indeed, the website says 130 kilos maximum rider weight, which is actually quite good. That's 10 more than the usual 120 kilos for most carbon wheels. So 130 kilos weight maximum, pretty good. Going by Windspace's website, UNAS is Norwegian bike seller company. Anyway, it's supposed to be in keeping with the theme of minimalism. So I don't know how minimalistic these wheels are compared to other wheels, but that's the whole idea of designed in Norway. Something to do with minimalism, design, aesthetics, not sure. Anyhow, if you can see any minimalistic design here in this compared to other wheels, <laughs> let us know. Colour choices, well the rims only come in this UD black, that's all there is. However, there is a choice of decals, you can get the decals in black, like this is, like a gloss black where you can hardly see the decals, a bit stealthy, or you can get them in the grey colour. Now the rims are quite round, up near the nipples there, quite broad, and then it goes around and flattens off, but it's not perfectly flat there, it does go around, yep, so it's round all the way. So it's not pointy at the nipples, it's got the modern rounded sort of shape, which is the way they all are now. Quite nice. The spoke nipples are recessed, which is nice, so I would call them halfway, so they're not completely recessed in the rim. And they're aluminium. As for access to them, so there's holes at each nipple for access for truing by the look of it. Just pulling out one of these tools, I would guess it's one of these. Yep, okay, so it's a five and a half millimeter hex to hold the nipple. And I've got drainage holes. There's one there. And on the other side, there's one there. So a bit of moisture aeration there in case any moisture gets trapped inside the rim. The spokes, so we've got the bladed carbon spoke inserted into an aluminium nipple that end. And on this end, it's interesting because the end sticks out through the hub and out the other side and does stick out about half a centimetre, five millimetre. Have a look at that. Who knows whether that's good or bad. And spoke count, so on the cassette side we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen on the cassette side and two, four, six, eight. So half as many on the rotor side. Front wheel, two, four, six, eight, ten on the rotor side. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 on the non-rotor side, so 20 spokes on the front and even. Now we've got on the front wheel, they're crossed once, twice, and they're not touching as they pass, which is good because you don't want carbon spokes touching as they go over each other. 1, 2, 3 cross, so 3 cross on the rear, on the cassette side, and only 1 cross there on the rotor side. And of course, not touching, which is good. The hubs, all black, semi-gloss satin, so not a matte and not a really shiny, sort of in between. They look quite nice. A lot of the hubs, they all look pretty much the same these days, don't they? Yep, lovely and smooth. 
Now these are supposed to have ceramic bearings in them. Front bearings. Now, yeah, of course, it's going to be better than the rear one because there's only two bearings here. Whereas in the rear, you've got four that you're feeling as it goes around. Yep. A bit weighted because of the valve. You take the valve off, which you can't, but if you put a tube in, it'll probably balance it. A little bit of imbalance with the valve, that's all. Not too much. The rear wheel, the clutch sound. Medium. And fast. Sort of a deep sound, isn't it? Without even counting, that's 36 engagements per revolution. And say with the clutch, it would be, yes, it's a DT Swiss style, the old sort, so you can change them and you can make more engagements per revolution if you want. Not that you really need to on road wheels anyway. Free hub body is, just get a magnet, and it's not sticking to the body, so the free hub body is aluminium. And there's no hub savers on there at all. Remember with an aluminium body, although this would be hardened aluminium, uh, with the sprockets when you put them on, they bite into the hub and they leave marks. With the free hub body savers, they're little steel strips, and that prevents that, well it doesn't prevent it, it slows it down a lot. But this hasn't got that. Let's pull the free hub off and have a look. Pull off the cap, that comes off quite easy. One seal. There's the bearing inside, ceramic bearing. Pull the free hub body off and there you go. So it's the older style DT clutch. So the end cap comes off easily and then the free hub simply pops off too. Moderate amount of grease in there, not too much, not too little. Now I started trying to pull off this collar with just my fingers, but I couldn't, so I ended up using two flathead screwdrivers, and then once it came up a bit, then my fingers could get a good grip on that collar, and no problem, it slides off the axle. Next is the spring holding washer, then the top spring, and then the top star ring. Now to get the bottom star ring out of the hub, don't use a pick or screwdrivers or anything, it's just simply turn the wheel upside down and the ring will fall out into your hand. And underneath that bottom star ring is a plastic washer. And there's a ceramic bearing in the hub shell. And just for reference, this is the order in which everything came apart or goes back together. Okay, you very observant people out there, you are right. The clutch rings are not quite the same sort as DT Swiss. This one's concave and this one's convex and they fit into each other. So does that mean that you can only use these clutch rings? Well, here's a set that a copy of the DT Swiss ones and you can get these anyway. I've got these on AliExpress. Let's put these in. Very simple, just replace like for like. And I'm doing this dry with no grease just to illustrate. So first put back that plastic washer, then the first star ring, teeth facing upwards, then the second star ring, teeth facing downwards, then the spring. Now you need to put back the original spring washer and collar. Don't use the one that comes with the kit that you bought because chances are it won't suit the split washer. So the original washer and collar on, and now the free hub body followed by the end cap. And so, no problem, they fit, so don't worry about that. And this one sounds a bit buzzier because it's 60 teeth, 60 engagements per revolution on those clutch rings. Now the one of course is 36. The front caps, just pull off quite nicely. There's a double seal there on the non-rotor side and a double seal on this side as well. And those blue sealed ceramic bearings in there, both sides. So double seal dust caps on both sides on the front hub. That's good. Right, over to seeing how true these wheels are. First, the rear wheel, and we're looking at lateral deviation. So the needle's going between minus five and plus 19. So that's 24, 0.24 millimeters of deviation. Concentrical trueness, in other words, up and down. 
We're going between minus 91 and plus 18. So that's 0.27 millimeters of deviation. So rear wheel all up, excellent, very true. Over to the front wheel, lateral trueness in between minus 3 and plus 24. So that's 27.27 millimeters. And concentrically, minus 1 to plus 23. So difference is 0.24 millimeters. Almost identical figures to the rear wheel and excellent. Okay, let's check the dishing of these wheels. So we put the jig on one side of the wheel, zero the gauge and flip it over and see if we get a plus or minus reading for the other side of the wheel. See how much deviation to the off the center it is. <laughs> perfect. Well, that's absolutely perfect for the rear wheel. Not very often you see that. Hmm. I've got point 0.1. Just rechecking because this means the rims are perfectly centered. So wow, point 0.1 millimeter for the front wheel. Those wheels are perfectly dished. Checking the tension of the spokes. Remember the easy way to do it, get a plastic tie lever or even a pen, plastic pen, something plastic, and you just hit the spoke and listen to it and see the change, hear the change in the tone. I use the plastic tie lever, it's a bit better. Almost identical. Try the other side. Oh, very even. Now we'll use a digital tension meter and we'll plug the numbers into the app and we'll see how the tension is according to the app. So we end up with 24 readings for the rear and 20 readings for the front. Plugging those numbers into an app and you get a nice circular graph. Checking the differences between the highest tension spoke and the lowest tension spoke on each side of each wheel. It's not uncommon to get figures between 60 and 90, so to get down to 20s and 30s is excellent. Right, time to check out spoke twist. All that means is your spokes should all be nice and flat in line with the way the wind's coming on. So if the wind's coming directly at you, in other words, the faster you go, the more direct the wind's going to be straight on the nose. That means the spokes have got to be at knife's edge straight that way. No point having a flat aero spoke slightly like that. It's going to be less aerodynamic, isn't it? It's going to be like a sail. It's going to be, the wind's going to be pushing against it, making the wheel go slower or making you go slower. So the spokes have got to be nice and aligned. So let's check, see how aligned they all are. And there's two places to check it, up here near the rim and also up near the hub, because sometimes they can be straight here, but up near the hub they're twisted or vice versa. So you want the spoke to be nice and straight all the way from the rim to the hub, hub or the hub to the rim. So a tool with a slot that fits nicely onto the bladed spoke. This first spoke shows how each spoke should be, and the yellow line illustrates perfect alignment. Moving along, next spoke. And you can see that's slightly leaning to the right hand side there, so that really isn't perfect. Next one. Yes, that's definitely acceptable, etc, etc. So all up for the rear wheel, I found two that were out. One up near the rim and one near the hub. For the front wheel though, I found eight that needed correction. To straighten the twist on the spokes, we just need to take some of the rim tape off to get access to the hole for the five and a half mil hex. Then you just need one of these tools with the slots in it to fit onto the blade of the spoke nice and snugly, and then you can turn the twist so it's straight. So you can see this one here is out to the right. The red line showing how much it's out, the green line is where it should be. Using the five and a half hex socket on the spoke nipple, the blade spoke holder on the spoke, and then turning them both inwards, and that will straighten the spoke without affecting the tension. Taking the tools off, and now we can see that the spoke's nicely aligned. And spinning the wheel, you can see it's still perfectly true. So it only takes a couple of seconds to do each spoke. Now they're nice and straight and nice and aero. Time for the most important thing. Let's put some tyres and tubes on these wheels, put them on a bike and get out there and ride them and see how they perform. 
Using the same tyres and tubes I use for all my wheel sets, that makes it fair to compare wheel sets to each other. Getting the direction of the tyre correct. If you want performance from your wheel set, TPU tubes is the way to go. Tyres and tubes went on fine. You really don't get much trouble anymore, even with the Chinese rims. They've got their moulds pretty accurate with their sizing, so you should never have any trouble anymore. In the early days, you used to have some that were slightly too tight or slightly too loose. Loose was a, a worry. <laughs> and um, But nowadays, no problems really. They're fine, so now we'll put the cassette on and the rotors and on the bike. A thin film of grease on the cassette body helps repel moisture and stops creaking of the sprockets on the splines. Don't forget the writing on each sprocket faces outwards and a small amount of grease on the thread of the lock ring. Rotors on and don't forget again grease on the thread of the lock ring. Wheels on the bike. Okay, one issue is the front wheel spins perfectly and brakes perfectly, but the rear wheel, just make sure the brakes is rubbing. <laughs> so somehow the rotor is not where the other wheel set's rotor was. So it's slightly to one side and the brake pad's rubbing. So that means you've got to undo the two bolts on the caliper, center the rotor and then we should be all right. Unfortunately, sometimes that is a problem when you get another set of wheels, the rotor on the hub is not exactly in the same position as the other set of wheels you had. It could be one or two millimeters to one side, as in this case. So we've got to move the caliper. That's a lot better. Done. Make sure all the gears work. Oh, by the way, So that's it, another ride done. And that's four rides now on these UNAS wheels. Now normally I'll do quite a few more rides before I do a review, but I can't see any point because it's not gonna be any change anyway. Can't see anything else happening to them. So I might as well tell you, get this video out there. Now the number one thing I wanna say about these wheels is they're so quiet. And the reason I say that because normally I ride at least 50 mil depth rims, 55, 60, 69 is thereabout. These being 40, they're, they're so quiet. It's like going back to the ordinary aluminium rims, you know, the very small modular rims. You don't ever think about the noise. Whereas the deep section rims, you get them a bit of a stick and whoosh, 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 off they go. You can hear them, which is quite nice. But these are really, really quiet, almost stealthy quiet. Now, maybe it's because there's less section of the rim, so there's not as much radiation of noise from the rim, maybe. The other thing I was thinking of, maybe the carbon spokes, they absorb a bit more vibration from the road, so they're not as ringy. So it could be to do with that combination. So quietness, definitely noticeably quiet. That'll be the first thing you notice when you ride these wheels, so quiet. Of course, the other thing you're going to notice with smaller section rims is they're less affected by crosswinds, and that's absolutely true. Very windy, but no problem. No problems with crosswinds, although we did have a really couple of windy, windy days, and you do feel it no matter, but it's mostly on your body, not so much the front wheel. So less affected by crosswinds than deeper section wheels, absolutely. 
Now being a slightly lighter set of wheels and also being smaller section rims, a little bit more maneuverable than the deeper section rims. So in that respect, maybe you could say that maybe not quite as fast, but it would be hardly noticeable at all. One thing I like about these wheels is they're comfortable. Comfort is very important on your bike. If you can't get comfort, then it's gonna come off your efficiency of your riding. These are comfortable probably because a smaller section rim, therefore your spoke's got to travel further from the hub to the rim. So you've got a slightly longer spoke, a little bit more flex there, a little bit more compliance. So therefore a little bit more absorption of road vibration, more comfort. For instance, you'll notice with 60 or 70 mil deep section rims, they're not as comfortable. They might feel stiffer, but they're certainly the more vibration goes up through the frame into you. With the width of these rims being what, 27, 28 on the outside, then the ideal tire size is 28. That's fine for maximum aerodynamics. It doesn't mean you can't ride 30, 32, or even 34s. However, it just means that you'll be slightly less aerodynamic. Just put the microphone here. So for instance, if you ride the rim here with a 28, it's like this. With a wider tire, you're gonna get that light bulb effect, aren't you? So it's gonna be less aerodynamic. You're gonna get the interference with the flow of air over the tire and rim surface there. So 28 to 30 size tires is ideal for these rims. Now, one thing that's got nothing to do with performance, however, I'm gonna mention it, is aesthetics. Deeper section rims do look good, not overly deep, around about 60s, I don't know, it's just a personal thing, I think. However, these obviously don't look as nice as deep section rims. It's just a personal thing. Maybe you do like this sort of rim or even the smaller ones down to 30s and, th and uh, 25s. So aesthetics, uh, personally, I don't think they look as good as deep section rims. What do you reckon? Something else I'd like to mention is deeper section rims don't feel as agile as smaller section rims. The deep ones tend to just want to go in a straight line. This is the way we're going. We're just going to get there as quick as we can in a straight line. Whereas these ones tend to be a bit more agile. Is agile the word? Maneuverability, being able to just turn a little bit more quicker. Not overly, not twitchy, because twitchy is to do with the frame geometry, not so much wheels but agility, I think, maneuverability, a little bit more agile with these smaller section rims. Overall, I'd say these wheels are great all-rounders. So a little bit of aerodynamics in there. You can put the fatter tires on, a little bit more comfortable, and they perform really nicely. And the best thing about it is the fact that they've got carbon spokes, ceramic bearings, uh, what else they got? The DT clutch system where you can change the clutch if you want to. Easy to service, which is going to be good in wet weather conditions if you ride in the wet a lot. And the fact is they're so cheap. I had to have a second look on the website. 850 US dollars. How can they do it so cheap? Maybe this is the way it's going to go with a lot of these uh, Chinese wheel sets. They're coming out with even cheaper, cheaper prices, whereas the name brand ones are maintaining their higher prices. So that's it, I'm gonna keep riding these wheels for another thousand Ks at least, just to get a nice feel of exactly what's going on. But I don't think there's gonna be much more change. All right, well, I've gotta go and have a shower now, and we'll see you next time.